Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios, and it's uh, June thirtieth. It's the end of the uh, the financial year, so we're halfway through the year. And uh, as you know, I've been very busy on Sword and Sounds Immortals. Uh, it is in early access now, which is uh, pretty exciting. We've been out for a month, and the game is going great. And I thank you guys. So what's next in Sword and Sandals Immortals development? I hear you ask, or not ask, as the case may be. Well, I was doing patches every day pretty much for the last, you know, three weeks and nearly a month. Patch, 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 patch. Just bug fixing and balancing and so on. And thankfully, I'm past the worst of all that now. So there's a few, you know, obviously a few little things to fix up, which, um, you know, I'm always monitoring. But the time has finally come to start adding in new content, which uh, many people have been asking for. And the first bit of new content that I'm adding in are species skills. What are they, you may ask? Species skills are special, unique skills that every different species has. Well, <laughs> as the name implies. So there are 16 different character species from, you know, humans, Guntarians, Fae, Golems, Glamazons, all that kind of thing. And each one, in addition to the sort of talents you have, like, you know, um, plus 10% bonus when fighting in the hills or, you know, 10% bonus when fighting at night, that kind of thing. Every one of them gets a unique skill that they can use in battle once per battle. That's the, the key. So they um, can only be used once in battle at any time. And this main skill will appear on your main radio wheel, not in your skill bar. So today I'm just going to go through a few of them and show you just what I mean. Because I've done about two thirds of these ones and probably, you know, another four or five skills still to go. But uh, the ones that are in place, I'm going to go through a few of them and just tell you all about them. So let's jump in. Here we are in the desert with our human warrior. And this is the first skill I want to show you. It's called the human spirit. Now notice on the battle bar, what I might just do first of all, I'm just going to turn the music off completely. Um, so it's on your main battle bar, not in your skill bar. They're your usual skills. These are a bunch that I already have. Um, the human spirit. Increase your spirit by 50% and cleanse all negative status effects. So what we'll do is we're going to let him try, uh, the bad guy try and, you know, do a negative status effect on us. So, okay, right. So see up here, we're electrified now. By using the human spirit, our spirit bar, watch this, is going to go up and that electrified status will disappear. So there you go, it's gone and that has gone right up. So that's a really cool skill because you know, if you're stunned or you're frozen or whatever, you can use this once per battle and get out of it. Uh, really useful to have. And also boosting that spirit can be really useful because then you can trigger the inspired effect and then you know get something really cool. Okay, the next one I wanna show you is the Guntarian skill, which is the Ancestral War Cry. And this has a 90% hit chance. And this one hits your enemy with a demoralizing status effect, so they cannot use special skills for three turns. Now, if you've ever had your character, uh, their stress bar, spirit bar, go right down to the point where they're completely you know, broken, one of the status effects they can have is being demoralized, meaning they can't use skills. So let's try this on our enemy. Now, he's been demoralized now, so he cannot use special skills in battle. So if I walk backwards, notice he can't do anything, you know, and I can still use my skill there and, you know, zap him or whatever. Finally, he can use it again. So that lasts three turns. I might increase that to five turns because it is quite a powerful, make it a bit more powerful, but we'll see. We'll balance that out. Now, here's another one. As you can see, these guys are wearing um, the same armor each time because I'm just using certain armor to test out other things. I've got precursor armor there, and I can't remember what that other armor is called. But this is an Eldor Hathian who has an occult aura. So they're, you know, a bit of a, a, a death magic is popular down in Eldor Hath. Hit your enemy with an anguish status effect, so they do half attack damage for three turns. Similar to the Guntarians one. So let's check that one out. So now he's anguished, and he's done damage to us, but it did very little. So all attacks do half damage for three turns. So if I move back, still electrified, but it's basically doing almost no damage to us. So that's a nice one to have. 
Now, as I was saying, I've still got to balance these ones out a little bit, and I want to get your feedback during, uh, you know, the ne- once the next patch goes up, just to find out what skills you like, what you found, you know, a little bit underwhelming, and we'll tweak them as necessary. There may be some that are too overpowered. We'll see. You know, it, the whole part of uh, you know, the whole point of early access is to tweak and balance and get things right in time for the full version. All right, let's check out a couple more, shall we? Here we have a fae, and a fae is, of course, one of the magical, elusive people who, uh, you know, steer out of, you know, away from everybody most of the time. Um, they have elemental fusing, increases all elemental spell damage by 33% for the next five turns, you know, once per battle. So let's check this one out. So right now, if we have zap, it does 11 damage. Okay, 11 right now, but if we use elemental fusing... Of course, they're immune to lightning as well. So let's use our own lightning spell. Now that does 14, so that's 33% higher. Check that out. Cool. Yeah, so it's a good one to have if you're a magician. The Fae is a very powerful magician, as most people have you have, have mentioned. Selfastus, the arena champion, is a little overpowered, and he's a Fae. Okay, uh, let's have a look at this one now. This is called the Wrath of Alicia, which is the Glamazon special skill, and that's a pretty cool one. Uh, it's the second coolest skill of the new ones, I think. All right, Wrath of Alicia. Pick up and throw your enemy, instantly destroying up to three pieces of their armor once per battle. All right. <laughs> so we just wreck their armor. And that's a really cool one if you have a heavily armored opponent. Their armor can be completely um, broken. So this one, this one I think is probably my favorite and probably your favorite too. Uh, Maybe a little overpowered, but um, okay, it's got a 70% chance. A violent melee attack with a chance to rip off random limbs from your enemy's body. Let's see if this works. So he just ripped their arm off, which is great. Yeah, I'm going to do that one again with uh, another scenario. It's a Yeren fighting a, a Clergish Bard. Chance to rip one arm, two arms, one leg, two ar- legs. 1% chance of uh, ripping off their head as well. So let's try it again. He just ripped off his shield arm. <laughs> now, there's one thing I'm going to add probably for the next patch as well is uh, a new status effect called Bleed. Bleeding damage, which is damage over time. And when you lose a limb, you'll have bleeding damage over the time. A few people mentioned I should have something like that. So that'll be coming soon. Anyway, there are more skills that I've uh, put in there that I haven't shown you just yet. And uh, you'll have to wait till sometime next week, I think, this patch should be ready. It's a big patch, and there's a few other things I want to add in there as well um, before we um, put it up there. And that'll be patch 0.5.1 or something like that. Uh, yeah, and I'm really excited because this one adds a little bit more tactical depth to the game, and I'm going to be going through all the arena champions again and balance them, balancing them with this and some new sort of um, other things I want to add into the game, a few new talent trees as well, things, talents for the talent trees, which will be cool. Okay, right now, I just want to take a little moment and thank my awesome Patreon supporters, Pookie, XTR, Luanats, Body X, Brandon K., Cheese Chaos, Churstens, Daniel Funches, Davi Hollander, Ilya Gurevich, Timmy Boy, X Up Omega, Jeffro of Hex 3D, Hopeless, Eunice, Li Hao Yu, Neighbor Jack, Noe Gurdjian, Pipuch, and Cesar Fernandez. One day I'll probably have enough Patreons that I won't have time to mention them all by name, but get in early and you get a mention every video. So uh, thank you guys. You know who else thanks you? The armorer. If you'd like to become a Patreon, that would make my day. Yes, I bet it would. Again, how do you make that guy happy? Never happy, even when you're a Patreon. <laughs> All right, my friends. Well, that's just about it for today. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, you can, of course, subscribe and like and do all the cool things you do on YouTube. Videos have been a little bit more infrequent than they have before the lead up to the game. Just because it hasn't been that much to talk about after early access. I'm sort of now knuckling down in just generating new content. And probably, you know, every week, probably every two weeks or so, I'll be getting a video out to you just showing off new things. And, of course, I read all your comments and uh, reply when I can. You know, it's funny, with early access out, I get a bit of breathing room. I can finally exhale a little bit. And that's really important to be able to just go, hey, It's cool. The game is out. People like it. You know, it's got a very positive rating on Steam. 
And it's important for me to not be so frantic all the time and, you know, getting content, 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 content out. Uh, this is a, a good time for Sword and Sandals because I can now refine and, and just make the game the best it can be over the next, you know, six, seven months and get it ready for full release. Multiplayer, of course, is coming. I have been doing tests with uh, my um, developer over in Canada who's been working on the multiplayer side of things. And next week we're doing a proper um, simulated fight between our two gladiators. And that will be a huge milestone. And once that is up and running, we'll probably be only a couple of months before launching multiplayer, which is another, you know, huge, huge part of the game. Until next time, my friends, look out for the patch. It's coming next week, and I hope you enjoy it. And let me know what you think, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.